Um, so we have 42 million children under five who are overweight or obese. Uh, this number is sky, sky rocketing. And I think that is a form of injustice. My name is Susanna Hasenöhr and I like to think myself as a kind of tech enable of a healthy lifestyle with the purpose of preventing serious diseases from happening. Well, I've always worked with technology, so I have quite a long work history both in the corporate sector as well as with startups. And so at some point in my life and in my career, I just, just kind of really just started to think what is it that I'd like to really do. And, and I think technology can be used for so many different purposes and um, connecting with my deep values such as the health and well-being of, of children especially and then I then took a, I would say, a change of course um, on my career and started focusing on digital health. Well, the reason I, I, I moved away from, I would say, mainstream technology, business corporates and, and even like digital media marketing was that, um, well, I became a mother myself and um, I've always been quite health focused, but um, having that baby in my arms and, and being responsible for her definitely sharpened my, my focus on, on health overall. And um, going from a young urban couple, just taking care of ourselves to actually being a mother <laughs> and being responsible uh, for that little bundle of joy um, made me look at certain things much more critically. Um, I've always loved sports, so the physical sides of well-being has always been very important to me. Uh, but feeding that small baby uh, made me realize how, how important nutrition actually is in our lives. I think it has not been necessarily a, a totally straightforward process. Uh, it's, it's been a journey of uh, gathering insights um, here and there, um, listening to yourself very carefully, and then finally taking that leap. Well, there's definitely the, I would say, financial side, uh, risk and, and reward op opportunities at, at the same time. Um, at one point, I just felt so compelled to do it that I, there was nothing else for me to do but to um, set up um, Choice Nutrition uh, with the mission to improve families' nutrition for the benefit of the children especially. Oh, there have been many challenges along the way and, and more <laughs> around the corner. Um, but and, and some of the biggest challenges what I see is, is setting up the right team and, and with that um, I would say delivering those initial proof points um, be it for the um, investor community or, or be it in terms of delivering a valuable great service uh, to the people and to stand amongst the competition. I guess I'm most proud of um, having taken the time and the courage to listen to some, um, I would say, inner voices and um, not continuing on that particular corporate, corporate career path um, as it can kind of just happen and happen, one thing leads to another, but to at some point to stop and, and to think what is it that, that you really actually want to do. Um, technology is a powerful um, tool for that, but also going after my um, real values. I think there is actually a lot of going wrong um, in the world in terms of um, what kind of foods are, are made available, um, how they are produced, um, naturally the um, ecological impact, um, the footprint of our foods. Um, the current food consumption contributes to 30% of the greenhouse emissions in the world and a lot of that comes from um, bovins, uh, so cattle. Um, so if we want to be um, 
more respectful towards the environment. There are, there are big issues there. But the one issue that really bothers me most is um, are, are the, the foods that are being given to children. Um, so we have 42 million children under five who are overweight or obese. Uh, this number is sky, sky rocketing. And I think that is a form of injustice. Um, however, I don't want to be finger pointing at, at individuals. Um, I know it can be very challenging to feed the family in a, in a more nutritious way. So that's why I chose the route of, of developing tools and solutions that will practically help the parents to put healthy meals on the table. I've always been quite health focused. Um, when I was growing up and in my earlier life, that was more coming from the angle of being physically active. Um, spending time outdoors, uh, sports activities, and but at, it was the point when I became a mother myself that the uh, the role of nutrition became so clear uh, in my mind. And uh, and recently I've actually started to support another startup. Um, it's a company called Healing, a Singaporean uh, health tech startup that helps patients um, and people with with migraines. And um, also there, the, the connection between um, healthy nutrition, that means avoiding processed food especially. Highly processed food is very clear. Um, so my colleagues at, at, at Healings are actually developing a new kind of food coaching service. Um, and already now we can say that just by improving the nutrition, um, we have made significant improvements in the lives of people with migraine. So for instance, we had a person who used to have 14 and more migraine days a month. And so just by improving the diet, uh, that person came down to four migraine days a month. Actually, personally, I don't come up with any recipes. Um, so I approach this uh, from a technological perspective. Um, so what I have done together with my team um, including especially clinical nutritionist Dr. Katrina Gallagher is that we've gone um, into internet and, and we have acquired over 100,000 recipes from popular websites and then we have um, run detailed nutritional analysis of those and set a bar as to where we think this is rather healthy or rather not and this happens through data analysis, first of all. So we look at all the macro and micronutrients in a recipe and, and we look at the ratio of the most beneficial nutrients to those to limit. And this gives us a basic score. And uh, once a re recipe of food has more beneficial uh, benefits than the negative, we say that's okay. We recommend that, but there is also a progress built into that. To be honest, it's still quite early days uh, for Joys of Cooking and uh, we see ourselves as an international service. Um, there are certain reasons why we have this selection of recipes, such as that there are not so many Singaporean recipes available in English language as of, as of today and, and some of the technologies we use are actually language dependent, so we use natural language processing to understand the content. Um, of the recipes so that we can do it on scale. But the ultimate purpose of that is really to be able to give every, anyone the right individual suggestions. So that's why we need to have quite a lot of recipes because not everyone likes the same recipes. Taste is very different <laughs> and I would say even if we, we're making a lot of effort that the food is nutritious, it still has to taste right. In the, in the recent months especially, um, I've engaged with uh, quite a lot with the medical community. Uh, that includes doctors and researchers, uh, specialists in the field of um, neurology, um, oncology. And um, it has become even clearer to me that if you don't lead a, um, a healthy lifestyle, if you don't nourish yourselves rather well, those are the pathways to some very serious um, health consequences further down the road. 
it could be 20, 30 years later, um, and, but the risk is much higher if you don't take care of your lifestyle. I don't recommend to anyone to jump into anything. Um, it's, it's tough, very tough to start a new business and you're going to need a lot of resources and you're going to need to put a lot of effort into that. So be also realistic in terms of uh, what are the um, I would say resources and capabilities and team that you can put together where you are but also how much effort you can put into that. Um, we have other commitments as well, from family, children, um, how does that all fit in there? But if you have that burning desire, um, there usually is a way.